liturgy on page 609 as we celebrate this third Sunday after Holy Cross. Today's liturgy is being offered for the soul of Bernard Thomas, offered by Nicole and I think it's Michelle. Let me make sure. <clears throat> yes, Nicole and Michelle. But before we begin, I'd like to welcome a new member to the parish here. Yesterday, this member received his baptism and his confirmation. Can you hold him up so everyone can see him? I'd like you all to welcome Isaiah, who took the name Gregory. Please continue to pray for him. This individual, this little baby, is the closest we have right now, I think in this church, to a modern day saint at present time. This baby has no sin, no stain on his soul. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, make us worthy to celebrate the exaltation of your glorious cross with sacred hymns and psalms. When you appear on the last day, and the sight of your cross will shine brighter than the sun, Gather us before you and surround us with your eternal light that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children.
Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Savior who made the wood of his cross a strong fortress for his flock and established it as a sign of the covenant for the salvation of his inheritance. By his cross, he exalted his church and gave joy to all people who believed in it. To the good one be glory and honor on the memorial of this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Christ our God, by your precious cross, you have given us perfect salvation and made us worthy to celebrate this, this feast with hymns of praise proclaiming, Blessed are you, O wood of the Holy Cross, you erased Adam's curse and restored his banished children to their inheritance. Blessed are you, O Holy Cross, for you united heavenly and earthly beings. Blessed are you, O Holy Cross, for you fulfilled the words of the prophets, enlightened the apostles in their preaching, crowned the martyrs for their faith, and honored the confessors for their loyalty. Now, O Christ, our Savior, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make the memorial of the celebration of the feast of the exaltation of your Holy Cross a sign of security and peace. By your cross, exalt your Holy Church, guide her shepherds, adorn her priests with virtue, purify her deacons, help the elderly, educate children, direct the young, protect orphans, care for widows, and grant rest in your dwellings of light, in your dwellings of light for our brothers and sisters who have died hoping in you. May we find refuge in the shadow of your cross on the great day of your second coming that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. You may be seated. We're on page 611.
St. Paul to the Philippians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader Nathan, upon the listeners, this parish for children in this city forever. Brothers and sisters, join with others in being imitators of me, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we also await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way, stand firm in the Lord, beloved. Praise be to God always. Peace be with you. From the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaimed life to this world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Now remain silent, O listeners, for the holy gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Let us listen and give glory and thanks to the living word of God. The Lord Jesus says, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. False messiahs and false prophets will, will arise, and they will perform signs and wonders so great as to deceive, if that were possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told it to you beforehand. So if they say to you, he is in the desert. Do not go out there. If they say, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For just as lightning comes from the east 
and is seen as far as the West, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever the corpses, the vultures will gather. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the power of heavens will be shaken, and then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming upon the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with the trumpet blast, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. This is the truth, and peace be with you. Good morning, everyone. Just a couple housekeeping things before I get into the homily. Is anyone here going to Fall River, Massachusetts for the party that they're having on October 5th? If so, this party's gotten canceled, but in its place, they're having a fundraiser party for aid in Lebanon. So if you're going, please come and see me. If you want a refund, you're more than welcome to it, and I can get you in touch with the person who will be offering the refund. Also, this week, and only this week, there will not be any daily liturgies. I will be away. So if you have an emergency and you need a Catholic priest, please feel free to call me at the rectory. I will have the rectory phone, as I always do, forwarded to my mobile phone, and I will get you in contact with the priest, and we will work something out. Also, one... Uh, actually two uh, announcements. The last one is, uh, the, the next one is, any, after liturgy, everyone's welcome down to the church hall for some coffee and muffins. We have our social hour down there. But also on October 13th, which is a Sunday, I think I made mention of it here before, um, after liturgy, actually that day is what we call Order of St. Charbel Sunday, after liturgy, we will have coffee hour, but we'll have something called a town meeting. And it's an opportunity for you um, to express yourselves about the church. And since I'm new, I get an opportunity to meet all of you and see what it is that you're looking for, something we may not have or something we have that you'd like to continue or things of that nature. Prior to that meeting, that town hall meeting, I will have uh, written out surveys provided to all of you. If you come to church, they'll be here where you can take them and you can fill in or check out stuff. We're looking for certain volunteers to do certain things and it'll be all enumerated on that survey. Today, when I heard the epistle reading, it's actually a continuation of last week when they had made mention of if you hang around bad people, it will corrupt your morals. Bad company corrects, uh, corrupts good morals. And when I heard that epistle today, ooh, I always like to keep this open. It's a Jewish custom tradition. No one can get the knowledge unless if it's closed. If you've ever seen them at the Western Wall. Sometimes they're banging their head on it. Or sometimes they're knocking it around, hopefully hoping that whatever knowledge would either come through through osmosis or would fall out and they would find it. But the key is to always keep that portal open so that knowledge can be transferred. Anyway, when I hear that epistle reading, you know what I thought of today? It went right through my mind. Double cheeseburger at Bowley's. Everyone knows Bowley's? Am I pronouncing it correctly? I like their double cheeseburgers. And when you go in there, I always make mention of it, that I'm coming for the man who holds the record 
for eating six double cheeseburgers under 20 minutes. Your shame is in, their glory is in their shame. Gluttony. I'm not saying it to belittle that kid. And it's a young man in his 20s. I actually say it because that's how it relates to me. And that gluttony, believe it or not, is something that can oppress us. God loved us so much that he gives us the opportunity to choose. It's called free will. We can either walk in his path or we cannot walk in his path and walk away from him. But what people fail to realize is, is that sin, whether they see the sin or not, is a form of oppression. That free will that we have can either liberate us or it can oppress us. You see, we're slaves. Our skin, our existence is sinful in the sense that we have fallen from grace because of original sin. Yesterday, we had the baptism of Isaiah, who took the name of Gregory. Matter of fact, Gregory, tomorrow is the feast day, the name of the saint whose feast day it is, Gregory the Illuminator. Does anyone know who today's feast day is? And I'll, at the end of the homily, I'll let you know. Uh, I'll give you the life of that saint. But because of the fall of Adam and Eve, we started to feel pain. We began to lie. We began to cheat. We began to steal. And people see our lives as Christians, as Catholics, as something that <clears throat> is regimented. And they feel that we do not have choice. People, many Catholics actually have come to me from this church and said to me, Father, we cannot live through the precepts of the Catholic Church. We want to use it like a Chinese menu, a little from column A, a little from column B. And if we don't agree with some of the things, we can replace it. No, no, it doesn't work like that. Living in the light of Christ is meant to be something that liberates you. I often see this during <clears throat> Lent. You want to rid yourself of all that sin, all those bad habits, all those things that collect up and mar that relationship with Christ. Get rid of them. You might not be able to. You may be only be able to get rid of one thing. Or you may suffer from that same sin, that same malady. If that's the case, you turn it around and you take what hand you're dealt, what you're given, and make it into something beautiful that works, gets you to walk closer to Christ. That sin keeps reoccurring. You stay in your humility and humbleness and you keep going to confession. God wants you to do that for whatever reason it may be. That's your path in life. But when you choose to walk with Christ inside of his boundaries, which we call the Catholic Church, that's meant to bring you true peace, true happiness. It's not meant to make you feel <clears throat> like you're bound, even though you are. Yesterday, one of the things we forgot to do at the chrismation, I forgot to tell you, we very rarely do it. After we baptize the child, we bless the garments that he brings with him or she brings with him. We place them on the child to signify, and by the way, these garments are white, to signify the lost robe of glory that Adam lost, that robe of protection in the Garden of Eden. But also when we chrismate them, confirm them, we bring something like a cincture. A cincture is a belt. These two young men are altar servers, not all four of them, two of them. Two are in black, two are in white. The ones in, in white have cinchures on. Or we place a headband on the person. Same reason why the priest wears a collar. It's uncomfortable. It's meant to remind the priest of his duties. It's meant to remind the priest of suffering like Christ. But that cincture, or that headband, is meant to remind yourself that you have to live within the bindings or the confines of the Catholic Church. It's a visual reminder 
but it's also a practical reminder because sometimes these things aren't too comfortable. And it's always meant to remind you of how uncomfortable it can be sometimes to be a Catholic. Today, in our gospel account, Jesus is reminding them of that. As I made mention of it last week, to tell the apostles that the temple is going to be destroyed is like telling us today that the White House, the Pentagon, and the Capitol building are all going to be destroyed at the same time, on the same day. Would blow your mind, just like it blew those apostles' mind. But Jesus is telling them something different. Jesus is asking them to look with inside themselves, believe it or not. If you remember, and this comes from Dr. Scott Hahn, if you remember in the Gospel account, he was mentioning vultures and corpses. This is a premonition of what's going to happen in the year 70, of the destruction of the temple. The Roman guards, if you've ever seen them, the Roman soldiers, they have insignias on their outfits. Some of them are eagles. Most of them are eagles. Jesus is making reference to those eagles by calling them vultures. And they are going to come and steal the dead people. The dead people are the ones who don't walk with Christ. They're the corpses. That's what this sin leads us to. Not a, a life of hope that hopefully one day we can be with God in heaven, but it leads us down to the path of destruction and death the other way. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell them today. They won't get it. They won't get it till many years later. So again, what he's giving them is the opportunity for true peace, true freedom. And he gives us that today. He's asking us, each and every one of us, to take stock in our lives. I like to do it sometimes in the morning or at the end of the day. I look in the mirror and I try to judge myself. Not that long, maybe about five minutes. We all do it, I think, at times, especially those who come to confession. There's certain prayers that we can pray to ask the Blessed Mother to, send, to implore her son to make us a good examination of conscience and if that doesn't work, we implore the Holy Spirit to enlighten us. But what are we looking at? We always look at the main things. Do we cheat? Do we steal? Do we lie? Do we forget our prayers? Things of that nature. But in the epistle account today, it's trying to get us to look somewhere differently. To look at our bad habits. To look at our friends that we associate with. Bad company corrupts good morals. And that's one of the points that Jesus is trying to drive home. But also, if you remember a couple weeks ago, I asked you this question. It's asking us to look at our goals, not only in what we're trying to do in the course of each day, but in our lives. I asked you this, do you remember how many times a couple of weeks ago? Why are you here? What are you doing to achieve the kingdom of God? And that's exactly what Jesus is trying to direct us to. What are our goals? Because to rid ourselves of this oppression now you'll hear me like a broken record. It's true peace. It's true knowledge. True love. In the form of Jesus Christ. But not only in the form of actual Jesus Christ coming to us, but what he left us behind. What he left behind. This church. The mysteries. But most importantly, our nourishment. The Eucharist. Whose feast day is it today? Hmm? You guys looked it up, didn't you? Because that's not a common name. <coughs> Rohanna or Kyriakos. Rohanna is the Syriac name for Saint Kyriakos, who was called the spiritual one in Syriac, Rohanna. He was born in Corinth at the age of four, excuse me, he was born in Corinth in the year 446 and became a monk in Palestine under the direction of Saint Euthymius. He became the superior of his monastery and was a model for all because of his piety, wisdom, and exhortations. He died at the age 107. Elijah, what are you doing? How are you? Certain Maronites calendars refer to him as Ruhanna, the singer or the cantor. Many churches and monasteries in Lebanon are dedicated to him. May his prayers protect us. Amen. We believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible.
We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of God. Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us. We will call upon this offering all those who please God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, St. Mary, St. Jude, and St. Rohanna, whose feast day we celebrate today. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the part, especially those from the sacrifices offered. For the soul of Bernard Thomas, remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. celebrate the Anaphora of St. Peter, page 774. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
O Father, God of peace and Lord of security, make us worthy to embrace one another with the sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. And peace to you, O servers of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with charity and loyalty that are pleasing to God. Remember where you're going? Peace be with you. Children of God. Today we have four altar servers, so you do not need to stand while we give the sign of peace. O Lord, we bow before you to receive your blessings and assistance, for we are weak, and you are the support and refuge of all. We raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, may the light of your face shine upon us, deliver us from every evil, and blot out all our transgressions, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion of, and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. Truly it is right and just to glorify and exalt you, O maker of all creation. With the angels we glorify you, and with voices of praise we cry out and proclaim.
He then commanded and instructed them, saying, Each time you celebrate these mysteries, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. O Lord, we remember your coming that saved us, and as we await your second coming, we offer you praise and ask you, on the day when you will judge the righteous and sinners, do not condemn us because of our sins, but have compassion and mercy on us. Turn your face away from our sins and assist us. For this your church implores you, and through you, and with you, and implores your Father, saying, O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. Spread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May those who share in these mysteries be cleansed body and soul from every sin and receive eternal life. Amen. You may be seated. We're on top of page 783. O Lord, accept our intercession and prayers and grant security to your people and peace to your flock. Protect our shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith. Assist the priests, the deacons, the subdeacons, and all those who serve your holy church, so that they may intercede and preach in our behalf. We pray to you, O Lord. brothers and sisters, teachers, and all the faithful departed here and everywhere who have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin. We hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. 
with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and take up our offering, so that in one spirit we may call upon you, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven. Lord, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we Peace be with you. O Lord, bless your worshipers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive their sins. For you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the most holy trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity.
Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Father, for this gift you've given us, though we're unworthy. Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your cross. Be their shelter and refuge and perfect them with your abundant blessings. That we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Please stand for the final blessing. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. Just a reminder, there won't be any weekday liturgies. I'm actually going to be hopefully leaving right after liturgy. So God bless you all. Take care and have a great week.